Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. All right, everybody. All right, back. Good to be back. Good to be back. Uh, so it's about 7 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday night. We just did a transfer portal update on Tuesday. The plan was not to do another transfer portal update today. Obviously, Sweet 16 is just about to tip off here. But there has been so much news over the last two or three days that I feel like we have to dive into the transfer portal news and notes just since Tuesday when we last did an update. We got some major players that have entered. Couple commitments that seem to be on the brink of happening. So let's go ahead and dive in. As always, my transfer portal rankings at AaronTorresOnline.com. Also, by the way, CBB Transfers on Twitter is your spot for all transfer portal news and notes. Let's start, certainly not maybe the biggest name that has entered the portal, but I think you can argue the most significant piece of portal news since Tuesday night. It came Thursday afternoon from Lexington, Kentucky. There, Adu Thiero, six foot eight, sophomore forward, played the last two years at Kentucky. He decides that he is entering the transfer portal. Now, if you are not a Kentucky fan, you don't follow him on a day to day basis, you're probably sitting there saying, Torres, that's not that big of a deal. I'm looking at the stat sheet right now 7.2 points, five rebounds per game, start about half Kentucky's games. How big of a deal could it be? Well, I am here to tell you. In an offseason where I would guess the vast majority of the Kentucky fan base did not even want John Calipari back, this is the worst possible news that John Calipari could have started this offseason with, okay? So a couple things stand out about this transfer. One, it's crushing because this guy to me, now maybe Kentucky fans, you feel different, but this guy to me felt like about as sure of a thing of anybody on the roster to be back next year for people who do not know the history his father played for uh, uh, John Calipari at Memphis the ties to this family go back two decades so when this kid committed he was kind of a three-star nobody knew anything about him I actually give John Calipari credit because I thought he did a great job developing this kid and credit to this kid for um, you know getting better year over year over year so to lose a kid, to start the portal offseason, that was a player that John Calipari has known since he was a baby, basically. Coached his father. It is a bad news, but here's why it's an especially piece of bad news. Because what did John Calipari say in that Monday morning or Monday evening media availability? He said, we need to get tougher and we need to get more defensive minded. Well, just about the only guy that was committed to playing defense this year was a do the arrow at Kentucky this offseason. And so to lose him, and it's not positive that he's going to leave. We'll get to that in a minute. It is just devastating because I think he is an important piece. And I'm going to take it a step further. I was a guy that was critical of this kid two years ago, but I thought this year he was an important piece and unfortunately kind of an underutilized piece, I believe, from Calipari. Was a very important piece early in the year. I, I tweeted it and I believe it. I tweeted it during the Carolina game. Kind of feels like, kind of felt like a Draymond Green type role. Physical, can defend multiple positions, rebounds, elite athlete, all that good stuff. He gets injured. And then when he came back and other guys came back from, from you know, injury as well, it felt like he was kind of the odd man out. And so I do wonder, is that part of it? Is it just that he was the odd man out and he knew I should be playing over some of these guys? And I've seen other people say it. And I'll say this about Kentucky. I really did feel like, when John Calipari had fewer players to play, more injuries, it actually helped the team. So this kid did not play as much down the stretch. I thought it was interesting. He was taken out early in the Oakland game. I wondered, by the way, if maybe he was injured because he didn't come back until late. I thought that was a tactical mistake. Anyway, he is now in the portal, and it'll be interesting to see what happens next. I saw my buddy Jack Pilgrim tweet that he is going to test the NBA draft waters. And I'm curious if this is one where he is going to see what else is out there for him. But it sounds like he's at least keeping the possibility of returning to Kentucky open. This is one, I hope John Calipari had his finger on the pulse of this one. This is a kid you need. This is a kid 
that you need for the 2024-2025 season. So we'll see if Calipari can get him out of the portal. But I think he is one of the most underrated, underutilized pieces in the portal. By the way, there's another conversation for another day. This is part of the reason why you didn't want to bring back John Calipari. And listen, it's done. I'm not here to criticize. But now every piece of negative news is going to be amplified. This is the first big one. A couple interesting names that have entered the portal since our last update Tuesday. This one, another one that was both very shocking and I'm not sure that's shocking at all. A.J. Store from Wisconsin, their leading scorer, I thought he was one of the best players in the Big Ten, averaged 18 points per game this year, is in the portal. Now, what, what's interesting about this one is a couple things. One, he was at St. John's last year. I get the impression that Rick Pitino wanted to retain him when Rick Pitino took over, and I kind of get the sense, and I've been told by people I trust, and I'm not blaming the kid, that maybe, just maybe, he was making some asks that Rick Pitino wasn't comfortable uh, fulfilling. But I bring it up because he goes to Wisconsin. I'll say this. I thought he was a total difference maker for this Wisconsin team. He is the type of player. I can't remember the last time they had a player like this. Super athletic, super skilled, 18 points per game, six foot six NBA frame. He's a really good player. But why this isn't surprising is that after the game against uh, James Madison in the NCAA tournament, he was asked about his future, and he gave kind of a weird answer. He's like, I'm not worried about the future. I'm going to miss playing with Tyler Wall. Love this team. That's it. And then a day or two after, he declares for the NBA draft. So you say, okay, you might lose him to, to the draft. But he was so noncommittal that you wondered if he would at least test the portal, and it appears as though that is what he has done. We will see if A.J. Store ends up transferring, ends up going into the NBA draft. But from what I have been told, this is an NIL play. Is there a bigger bag out there? Is there a bigger opportunity out there? And by the way, I'm not blaming the kid. This is the world that we have created. Multiple time transfers, NIL, collectives, whatever. Go get paid, man. And if, if it gives you the opportunity, if there is a, a spot financially that you can take care of your family, I'm never going to criticize. These are the rules we've created. I think there's a possibility that he does transfer. We will see. But when I did, I put out my transfer portal rankings on Tuesday in terms of best players, I had Zeke Mayo at number one, who we're going to talk about momentarily. I think this guy has surpassed Zeke Mayo as the best player in the portal. Let's keep it going because another very interesting name, Riley Kugel, okay? A uh, 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 six man at Florida, really good player. Was a guy that I think people thought could be an NBA type player. Uh, comes back to Florida this year, kind of the odd man out in the Walter Clayton, Zion Pullen, all the guys that they had. But bring it up because he was a really good player for Florida, nine and a half points per game off the bench, NBA athleticism. And what's interesting about him, I said when he entered, I said he'll be one of the most coveted players available. But here's the thing. After entering on Wednesday, he is already down to four schools, which he announced publicly on Thursday. And those four schools are Kansas, Houston, UConn, and Arizona. Now, I have no inside intel here, but I'm just kind of putting puzzle pieces together. Arizona, if nothing weird happens, has about a million guards coming back next year. I was at Arizona Media Day on Wednesday at Staples Center, crypto.com arena, whatever you want to call it. I didn't get the sense Jaden Bradley's not going to be there next year. I didn't get the sense that KJ Lewis is not going to be there next year. They have three five-star guards and wings committed for next year. Carter Bryant, McDonald's All-American, Jamari Phillips, and then the five-star kid that just reclassified within the last week. Kylan Boswell obviously is only a sophomore. Is he going to come back? Is he going to test the waters? Whatever. So I don't know that Riley Kugel makes sense at Arizona. I could be totally wrong on this. I don't get the sense that UConn is necessarily the spot. To me, I could be wrong. This kind of feels like a Kansas thing. Okay, so because why do I feel like it's Kansas? First off, Bill Self said point blank. We have already started thinking about next year. He said it after, uh, I guess it was after the tournament game last week against Gonzaga. He said, we've been thinking about next year for a month. And so you know that Bill Self wasn't happy with the depth of his team last year, the talent of his team. And I think outside of basically Dewan Harris, I think it's a question of who comes back. I think Hunter Dickinson's probably back. He has that COVID year if he wants it. But Kevin McCullough's gone. Furphy will see if he's back or not. But whether those, even if Furphy's back, there's still 
two, three guards that you need to add to your roster. So my hunch is that Riley Kugel, if I had to guess a favorite, it would be Kansas. But let me also take a minute and talk about Kansas for a second, because I think you can see based on what Kansas is doing, Bill Self is gearing the F up this offseason, okay? Because the bottom line is, you know, Bill Self, like a lot of these great coaches at Blue Blood programs, he has historically kind of cherry-picked a guy here or there. Only the big names, you know, the, the biggest fish that are in the portal. Hunter Dickinson last year, Remy Martin a few years ago, Kevin McCullough a few years ago. He is not, he, he is full speed ahead this year. We just talked about Riley Kugel. I think it's worth noting. Um, uh, Zeke Mayo, who we talked about a minute ago. I believe outside of AJ Store, probably the best player in the portal. Well, Zeke Mayo, uh, Summit League Player of the Year from South Dakota State. He put out his first list of schools via 24-7 Sports High School Hoops. And here is the list, among other schools. Kansas. Texas, Missouri, Florida, Houston, Alabama, Indiana, Arkansas, on and on. There's about 20 other ones. I'm not going to name them all. But I bring it up. Kid is from Lawrence, Kansas. Kid also declared for the NBA draft. But I think there's a very good scenario where, listen, I don't. I, I think Bill Self's probably sitting there looking at it like, we let this kid get out of Lawrence once. Let's make sure it doesn't happen again. Six foot three, really explosive guard, 18 and a half points per game, three and a half assists, six boards at six foot three, six foot four, shoots the crap out of the ball. I think he's the perfect kind of compliment guy that they need for next year. So we will see what happens. But to me, um, you know, I, I would think that Kansas is the favorite. He is from Lawrence, as I said. Um, you know, he's from that Lawrence area, uh, and he's a really good player. Could he declare for the draft? Absolutely. Is it likely that he may be possibly as well? Or he did declare for the draft, excuse me. Is it possible that Kansas is a favorite? I don't know. Like I said, I, I think there's a good possibility that outside Dewan Harris, they really revamped that backcourt. They're obviously going to lose uh, Nick Timberlake as well. So Zeke Mayo is a name that has been reached out to. And I thought this was an interesting name. Tony Perkins from Iowa is another player who, uh, uh, excuse me, who uh, Kansas has reached out to as well. Tony Perkins, for people who don't know, just a steady veteran guard. I remember talking about Joe Toussaint when Joe Toussaint hit the portal from West Virginia. Joe Toussaint began his career at Iowa. I bring it up because Tony Perkins, to me, feels the same. 14 and a half points per game for Iowa this past season. Four and a half boards, 4.6 assists per game. He was one of the few bright spots for this Hawkeyes team this past season. Well, he is now in the portal. And you talk about the big boys, big game hunting for Tony Perkins, Kansas, UCLA, Indiana, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Arkansas. Everybody's after this guy. By the way, I do see, by the way, that USC has reached out as well. Kind of interesting. They don't have a staff right now. DePaul has reached out. Curious if, if Chris Holtman could make some inroads here with some of these major portal guys. But the bottom line remains is that to me, this is a sign. Kansas is all in. We talked about three guys already. We talked about Zeke Mayo. We talked about uh, Riley Kugel. We talked about Tony Perkins. Kansas is being aggressive. I don't think it is coincidental. And I expect them to take two, three guys, maybe more, out of the portal this offseason. A couple other names that are interesting. You know, one, I'll say this. I mentioned the fact that um, Iowa, lost, uh, Iowa lost Tony Perkins to the portal. Did you see who else they lost to the portal? Patrick, uh, uh, Patrick, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm tripping over here. Patrick McCaffrey, who's obviously um, uh, uh, the the coach's son. So coach, uh, coach Fran, Fran McCaffrey. I don't know why I said McCaffrey. Fran McCaffrey, his son Patrick McCaffrey, entered the portal on Wednesday. Now this was a big thing, and I think. Fran McCaffrey, because of how he's handled himself on the sidelines, people making a big deal about it. I don't think it's as big of a deal as everybody says. Uh, he got injured, came back from injury, didn't play as much. And he's a player, and this is certainly not something I would ever make light of. Um, he's a player who's been very vocal about mental health struggles. And so you wonder, playing for the State University, playing for your father. I saw somebody tweet this, and I think there's probably some validity to it. Is it possible that maybe he just wants to enjoy his final year of college basketball without the pressure 
of playing for his father without the pressure of being under the spotlight at Iowa. I don't know, but my guess is that's probably the case. A couple other names that are definitely worth noting. One, I saw this, uh, uh, Joe Tipton. Corin Johnson, a guard that played the last couple of years at Washington, is a very good player. Or, or he played his freshman year at Washington this year. He's from Seattle, and because Washington isn't very good, I don't think a lot of people know the name. But as a freshman or as a sophomore this year, averaged 11 points per game, super you know athletic guard at 6'2". I think he can be, in the Big Ten, a really good player next year for Washington. But what's interesting is he has put out a, a, a final list already. Florida, Oregon, Indiana, UCLA, and a return to Washington. He's from Seattle. I'll be curious if Danny Sprinkle can move fast enough to get him because I think he's a very good player that you want to build around. But he is down to a final five, Florida, Oregon, Indiana, UCLA. We'll see if he has any other uh, visits in him or any other decisions in him. I saw Doug McDaniel. Um, is uh, Somebody t- texted me that Doug McDaniel is going to visit TCU this weekend. TCU obviously needs a replacement for um, for Jameer Nelson Jr., who obviously just graduated fifth-year guy. Obviously the big name, Tucker DeVry uh, from uh, from Drake. Of course, Darren DeVry is his, is his father. Tucker, of course, was the uh, uh, Missouri Valley. I'm all over the place today. Sorry, I, I got to get this update in before these games start. But Tucker DeVry, 21 points per game, seven boards per game, a 37% three-point shooter, played the last couple years at Drake for his dad. His dad, of course, took the West Virginia job. His dad, he will follow his dad to West Virginia. That's a kid you can build around. He's a high major player. He would have been a high major player out of high school, but followed his father to Drake. His father takes the West Virginia job. He is following him. So great piece for uh, his father to build around. And then one more name. Uh, We got a lot of UConn fans who watch us here, but also Gavin Griffiths. Got to give him a quick shout out. Played high school ball in my hometown of West Hartford, Connecticut. Not for my alma mater. He played at Kingswood, Oxford. He's from Central Connecticut. Six points, two boards per game at Rutgers, but he's a former like top 50-ish recruit. I think he has a chance to be really good. I will be curious the type of teams that reach out to him because I think he is a high upside guy with a lot of potential. I don't have any intel that suggests that he's going to UConn, but I could see him being a piece that UConn brings in in two years from now. He's really, really, really good. Ah, so I bring it up to say another interesting update here. I think the big story is Adu Thiero. I also think the big story is Bill Self. And obviously, as the portal gets crazier, as stuff keeps happening, we're going to keep you updated here on the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube channel. Make sure to.